Let's just have a moment of silence together. And uh, just calm our hearts and our thoughts. Well, thank you that we can meet this way in your presence with one another. We thank you, Lord, that uh, we meet as well with all God's people throughout the city, throughout the nation, throughout the world at this time. And we are happy to lift our hearts and worship to you. We're happy, oh God, to thank you, to bring our hearts of gratitude to you. Yes, Lord, to receive from you, to be blessed by you, but then to go from this place with your presence, your love in our hearts in such a way that we can then share with others and bless others. So be with us, we ask, this morning, in Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome to our Zoom service here at St. Paul's today, the 19th of July. Um, very warm welcome. Uh, it's a communion service. Um, the liturgy will be um, guided through by um, slides, PowerPoint slides, and you're welcome to join in. You're welcome to join in our communion with Bread and Wine at Home. Again, a reminder that the service will be recorded, and if you um, are unhappy for that for any reason, then just switch off your video. The um, service will then be online on our website as from tomorrow. So we're happy to be in God's presence today, and let's just have a moment of quiet and, and silence as we prepare our hearts in God's presence. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. We pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open and all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the words of comfort our Saviour Christ says to all who truly turn to him. Come to me, all who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Amen. Lord, have mercy. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with all. And we pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that has passed and grant that we may serve you in newness of life. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now collect for today. Merciful God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as pass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And for our song worship, let's join in this wonderful song together. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone your presence Lord Holy Spirit you are welcome here come flood this place and fill the atmosphere your glory God is what our hearts long for to be
First reading is taken from Psalm 139, verses 1 to 11, and 23 to 24. And they're going to invite Elaine this morning to uh, read that for us. Thanks. Thank you, Elaine. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You, deserve my, you discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before. You lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light will become night around me. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Thank you, Elaine. And our gospel reading today is taken from Matthew, chapter 13, 24 to 30, and then 36 to 43. And this morning, Alison will be reading the gospel for us. Thank you, Alison. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. The parable of the weeds. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did an enemy did this, he replied. The servants asked him, do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered, because while you are pulling the weeds, you may uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. At that time, I will tell the harvesters. First collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned, then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. Then he left the crowd and went into the house. His disciples came to him and said, explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He answered, the one who sowed the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world and the good seed stands for the people of the kingdom. The weeds are the people of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. As the weeds are pulled up and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will weed out of his kingdom. Everything that causes sin and all who do evil. They will throw them into the blazing furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Whoever has ears, let them hear. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Thank you, Alison. And I'm going to invite Mo Mo Trudell this morning to uh, share thoughts from those passages uh, with us. Bless you, Mo. Morning. Morning. So, the kingdom of heaven, or maybe the kingdom of heaven 
in lockdown, we'll see what transpires through the message. <clears throat> a little girl called Abby asked the vicar, Sam Wells, about the kingdom of God. Abby is around five or six, and she simply wanted to know where heaven is. Is it in space or in the sky, she asked him. Here's his answer. Firstly, Abby, that's a great question. Heaven is like a secret garden. When you go through the gate, you're in a different space and time than you have ever known before. With God and with creation and with each other in a completely different way. It's a wonderful thing to look forward to, and we just get little glimpses of it in this life. The name of the gate you go through is the into the secret garden is Jesus. It's been a few weeks since I heard this story. It's like a little mini parable. And I think it resonated with me because, well, firstly, it's a great answer. I wish I'd thought of it. But the way it's framed, anyone can understand it. And it's been mulling around my mind a lot. And then when I read the story in Matthew today, that was the first thing that came to my mind. So I thought it deserved the opening sentences. Jesus loved telling stories. And chapter 13 has got quite a few. And nearly every one of those stories features what the kingdom of heaven is like. Our parable is about halfway through the chapter and just before it comes the very first seed story about the scattering of the seeds that Robert told us about last week. And then we have our story, the kingdom of heaven is like a farmer who planted good seed. Then there's two little mini stories quickly following, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, the kingdom of heaven is like yeast. Then back to the bigger stories, the kingdom is like hidden treasure, the kingdom is like a pearl, and the kingdom is like a fishing net. So there are seven explanations, many stories. And it's at this point Jesus pauses to ask the disciples, do you really understand? And they do appear to be catching on. People sometimes say that because the disciples were young, they were probably teenagers, and having followed Jesus for only three years or so, he needed to reinforce his teaching through stories because the future of the kingdom would depend on their understanding, sowing seeds and then harvesting many times over. And we know it's through them the church was born. We have the advantage of their foundations, of course, plus we've got 2,000 years under our belt. And yet, since the pandemic has struck us and our feet have been knocked out from us, we probably have more questions than answers, to be fair. And certainly meeting at church and our weekly routines and our missional activities have all come to a halt. We're just not used to it, are we? We're not used to living under restrictions. We've been living in peace since the end of 1945, since the end of the war. And although we're aware of all the terrible atrocities across the world, we haven't been affected in the UK in the way that Syria has, or Yemen, or Palestine, or Iraq, or Afghanistan, and all the countries that we see on the news all of the time. Those people live in, in traumatic situations. The specialists, however, the disaster specialists, tell us that we are actually living through a trauma and our bodies are responding to that. Our nervous systems have been affected and so have our minds. And for those working on the front line of mental health, the ministers doing so many funerals and looking after their congregations at a distance for hospital chaplains and others, they know the importance of letting people tell their stories no matter how many times. It's really important for our psychology to be able to offload and to be listened to. And there will be many thousands of stories to be told. 
we can't see the end of the COVID story yet. And we feel unsettled, if that's a good word to use, just to sum up all the different feelings we might have. We feel unsettled. What do we do in these circumstances? And how do we think things through? Well, we know what we did do. If we had a garden, we planted and we got outside as much as possible. Others without gardens made the most of the parks. We noticed things differently. We noticed creation and nature and spring and blue skies with no planes and pollution paused. Then we rattled those pots and pans in the kitchen. We cooked fresh food and we planned our meals and time seemed to take on a different meaning. We were not rushing from here to there and back again. We also notice how really hard it was to be separated from those we love and care about and our church family and no way to offer each other hospitality and a hug. We focused on what we could do, but not what on, what, on what we couldn't achieve. Our Psalm today, Psalm 139, it's obviously just a snippet of it because it's quite a long Psalm, but it's a beautiful reminder that Jesus has been with us the whole time. Maybe we should call him Lockdown Jesus. He's been reading our thoughts. He's been ahead of us. He's been behind us. He's known what we were going to say. He was in the sea with us. He was in the heavens with us. And darkness could not exist because he was in those dark spaces casting the light. In the trauma of a pandemic, he has been and is with us. We're still finding it though impossible to forward plan, aren't we? And in a way, we are similar to those early followers of Jesus. They certainly didn't know the plan. All they knew was that he was the way. Early followers were known as people of the way. The theology of the Trinity and the Holy Spirit had not been academically ratified by hundreds of bishops. That came later from the Council of Nicaea in 325. But before that, how simple would it have been just to follow the Waymaker? Is it that simple for us today? Armed with the whole Bible, 2000 years of history, all the brilliant thinkers from Augustine to Martin Luther and thousands of others, you could imagine we might have more to go on, but not in a pandemic not in a disaster. Academic theology just doesn't cut it. So we simply lift our eyes to heaven and we ask, Lord, what's the plan? St. John of the Cross says in his cloud of unknowing, when we don't know, we simply grasp the heel of heaven and hold on. We've held on through lockdown, but now what? Well, let's just have a look at, quick look at the parable in more detail. The farmer is like the kingdom of heaven because he planted good seed and the enemy comes in and puts the weeds in to sabotage the crop. The commentators and historians of the time tell us that the biology of the seeds look very alike and it's impossible to tell them apart until they've grown. And I wonder if this is a helpful way to think about the two types of information we've been receiving as two types of seeds. The scientific information and the political information we've been fed over the last few months. Both valid, both have taken root in our minds as we've become more educated in the new language of the virus, of PPE, social distancing, the R8, all of those things. We didn't know this language before. Yet, as more information was released, it became harder to see what is true, dependable, and how that information could help us make decisions. In, Romans time, in Roman times, there was a penalty for those who sabotaged crops because wheat was a staple for the Romans too. The rules were clear, and hence we see the servants incensed that the rules have been broken. 
we know where we stand when the rules are clear. I'm not going to start with who has broken the rules in our government or how they should be dealt with, that's enough said for another time. But the servants jumped to, quite understandably, a quick fix, a knee-jerk reaction. Wade in, pull out the weeds. No, says the smart farmer, you'll disturb the wheat as well. He's using kingdom thinking. Now I'm no farmer or great gardener, but I do know through my very amateur gardening efforts in lockdown that it takes ages for plants to bloom, but a bit of rain brings out all the weeds. Give it a bit of time and you can easily see the difference. Then the farmer will wait to bring in the harvesters, the experts who can efficiently get rid of the weeds and burn them. We so depend on the experts. But going back to our analogy over the past few weeks, who has helped us sort the weeds from the, the wheat from the weeds in terms of the information we've been given? And John will know all about this because when the government recommended that churches could reopen, the Church of England published 27 pages of A4 by way of rules and guidelines. So there's helpful information and then there's just information overload. The kingdom of heaven is like the smart farmer who planted good seed. One sentence. In fact, we could sum up Matthew in the seven sentences of what the kingdom is like. Not 27. What then does the kingdom of heaven look like in our lockdown situation? The Sam Wells mini parable at the beginning of this talk tells us that the kingdom of heaven is like a secret garden. And how many of us discovered our gardens for the first time in a real way during lockdown? That might be one of the little glimpses he mentioned. He says all creation is in this garden. How many of us noticed afresh that created order of spring, life, birds, sky and lack of pollution? He says we are with each other in a different way. That's been so true for us. We may malign the Zoom way of working as it's taken over many of our lives, but we would have been so disconnected without it. I wonder what other new ways we will find of being with each other, looking for the glimpses in the new and unusual ways. We can't still see the way ahead, but do we need to? Jesus is the way maker, the miracle worker, the promise keeper. He's the light in the darkness. And we follow him because we know he loves us. He's lighting the path in the darkness and turns and beckons us to follow him. And so we follow in trust. In turn, we grow in that love, the Jesus love that's too marvelous to keep to ourselves. Through us, as through the first disciples, Jesus sows the seeds and prepares us to bring in the harvest. The good news is there's still plenty of sowing for us to do. How might we do that, I hear you ask. After all, the lockdown isn't over yet, Mo. We show people into the kingdom of heaven. We shine that light on the path for them. We open the gate and before we close it, we point to the sign, the sign that is the name on the gate and that name is Jesus. Amen.
Let's affirm our faith now through the creed, the Nicene Creed. We say together, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, 
God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified. You were spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And I'm going to invite Theo this morning to lead us in our prayers. Thank you, Theo. We thank you for me and for the seeds of your word which she has planted in our hearts today. Help us to water them with hope and guide us as we grow with healthy roots deep in faith. As we blossom for others to see, we pray today that new seedlings be planted in your kingdom and that the hearts of others are turned to you and nourished with the sunshine of your love. As preparations take place for Alpha, we lift our church leaders to you. We thank you for these people, their giftings, and all that they bring to the programme, and pray your blessing on the arrangements that they make and the sessions that they plan. We thank you for the technology to deliver Alpha Online and ask you to ensure its stability for the course. We ask that this online connection doesn't hamper the, sen the sessions, but rather enhances them. As we pray for everyone at St Paul's to join in, that they may feel a question on their heart that they want to bring. Bless their hearts and guide them, Lord. We pray for the courage to share an online post, make a call, or just start a conversation. And for the boldness of those invited family and friends. If there is someone that you want to invite, you may want to lift them to the Lord now. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. As we are beginning to emerge from lockdown and are making plans to reopen the church for Sunday services, we ask that those plans are brought to life with you at the very centre of them. That those plans are in active worship in themselves and they are blessed by you. We pray that with the distancing and restrictions in place, we are not distanced from you but that your presence is in our church building and in every home as we connect together. Please keep us safe as we move forward in this very important step. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you for children, for grandchildren, for the children of those we know and for all the children connected with St Paul's. As these days of homeschooling for some and restricted class classroom learning for others draw to an end and we ask you to keep them safe as teachers and school workers continue to plan for september please guide them through this difficult and challenging time lord we also please Lord, in this pandemic, we pray for health and restoration. We pray for those with physical and mental ill health, for those weary and fatigued by the limitations of lockdown, for those who are anxious at the lifting of lockdown, 
for those who are vulnerable and most and most at risk the coronavirus for those who are more lonely than they have ever been for those who are caring for loved ones and for those who are grieving and bereaved please lord be their healer comfort and protection be their strength shield and provision be their security safety and close companion we entrust to those that we know need you right now. Thank you, Lord, that when we are weak, you are strong. Thank you for your unfailing love, your blessings and your faithfulness through these uncertain times. Forgive us when we lose sight of these things and be at the very centre of everything we do, forever enabling us to refocus on you. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you so much, Theo. And let's prepare to share communion together. God is love. And those who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. And now we give you thanks because you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in him. Holy, holy, holy Lord. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice, made once for all upon the cross, Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with St. Paul and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, forever and ever. Amen.
As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. We pray. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation, and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we, with the whole company of Christ, may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. The body of Christ. The blood of Christ. God of our pilgrimage, you have led us to the living water. Refresh and sustain us as we go forward on our journey. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and among you, now and always. Amen. Let's continue our worship and song.
with trumpet sound Oh may I then in him be found Dressed in his righteousness alone Faultless stand before the throne Thank you, Lord, and our St. Paul's daily prayer, which we join in again today. Lord Jesus, please save us and help us. Put to flight all sin and sickness and bring in your kingdom of love, joy, and peace. Amen. And we come to our family news for this week. Uh, thanks for joining with us today and we look forward to seeing you next Sunday, the 26th of July for our Zoom Sunday service. The big news is that the church building will be open for um, worship next Sunday, the 26th. And uh, as folks come into church, we will be joining in together in the Zoom service um, that, we're, that we will be offering. We're giving first refusal to those who um, uh, can't access Zoom or not digitally connected, and uh, we're in the process of doing that at the moment. But um, just to say that there will be lots of restrictions. Uh, only 30 people will be uh, allowed into the building. There will be um, social distancing and um, no singing and, and so on. Um, if you are unsure or if you feel that you're still vulnerable or anxious, uh, the best thing to do is to carry on joining with us via Zoom. However, we do have some uh, vacancies. Um, we've still got spaces uh, for next week. And if you are thinking of coming in person, then would you please let me know? Uh, ring me on the church number 598-366 or email at stpaulslongtonhall at gmail.com and I'll give you uh, all the information that you need for that. So that's, uh, that's a big step forward for us next Sunday, the 26th of July. And the next big step for, forward for us is our Alpha course. And uh, we're going to watch a video, first of all, just to give us a flavour of what it's all about. This old friend of mine, Helen. My best friend. My friend called and invited me to try Alpha. Y recuerdo que mi papá me dijo, mira, hay comida gratis, ve. They handed me a invitation. It was just a random invitation. And I said, like, why not? Why not? Let's try it. Why not? Let's go. And I found like a like a really awesome community of people. They helped me find who I was just by listening. Alpha helped me in the knowing of God. Empecé a entender que el amor. De muchas maneras. I just knew. I was a different person from that moment on. I knew I had purpose. I, I felt really comfortable and like starting to invite my friends. I've seen Alpha really impact people that I work with. I would definitely encourage people to get involved. It's one of the coolest things I've ever experienced. It all turned out to be life changing.
fantastic. And as we move forward, uh, we're really excited about offering the course. And I'm going to ask Wendy now if she would just share some more details and information about the course. Thanks, Wendy. Okay. Good morning, folks. Am I on? You are. Right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, over the last week, you should have all had a, an email with two invites in it. Uh, one to the Alpha course and one to a WhatsApp Alpha prayer group. Um, so please respond to these. Uh, if you want to join the WhatsApp prayer group, all you have to do is let us have your mobile number, me or Alex or Sumas or the office, uh, if you don't know ours. Uh, the other one is to respond to the Alpha course. And I suppose at the moment, the, the responses will be, from one end, what is Alpha, which we're trying to explain, and for the other one, uh, I've done it before, so it's not for me. Let me tell you, I've done it before, uh, I've done it many times, but we haven't done it here at St. Paul's since 20, 2011, and that was the last one here. So really, this course is for everyone. It's for non-believers, it's for new Christians, it's uh, those who've been on the road a long time, old stages like me. So it's for everyone uh, that wants to take part and everyone is invited. So what's it all about? What is it? What is this course? Alpha is a tried and tested course. It's been going over 20 years, which comprises this time a series of interactive sessions that just not only examine the Christian faith, but explore some of the big questions of life. What am I here for? Is there a God? And after COVID-19, how can I live life to the full again? It runs for about, it runs for 10 weeks, one hour sessions, mainly on a Wednesday evening. Um, and the evening will go very similar every time. We'll have a welcome. Uh, you can have your cup of tea with you. Uh, and we will watch a video for 20, 25 minutes all together. And then we'll break out into smaller groups of about 12 people and just talk, ask questions you wouldn't normally ask while in church, ask question, any questions that you've got, discuss the video, or even just sit there and be quiet and listen to other people's answers. It's all that free and easy to do. But the big advantage, of course, is it's done in the comfort of your own home. You'd be sitting at home, you might still be finishing your tea, uh, you might have your cup of coffee and your cake ready, uh, and it's all via Zoom. So anyone can join in. We can have America and Manchester and Ghana and anywhere else in the world, and we can all join together uh, to, to follow this course. So lastly, go and check your invite, because your invite is for you. It's for you and your family, and, but it's also for others, as you've just seen on the video. It's for friends and family. It's for neighbors and work colleagues. Just invite them. If they haven't got Zoom, perhaps invite them, if it's safe to invite them into your bubble, into, into your home. But if they have got Zoom, just connect with them and just let us know uh, via the office, uh, you know, there will be extras. So that's, that's all I, I can say at the moment, but I just want to invite you all. I want you to think about it carefully, pray about it, pray about joining the Alpha app, the, the uh, WhatsApp group that's going, and think about joining the Alpha group a week on Wednesday, seven o'clock, just for an hour. I'll be there, will you? Thank you, Wendy. It's uh, an exciting step forward for us as we ease out of lockdown and reach out with the love of God. Um, again, a reminder of our men's group. We, a few of us met yesterday to watch the uh, Stoke match which was absolutely brilliant. And uh, we know that they're staying up, so that's great. Um, but we do meet uh, via Zoom and um, we'll be organizing other socials. I want to thank Tony behind the scenes who uh, is organizing uh, most of those things. If you want to be a part, then contact uh, uh, myself, um, email me on stpaulsontenall at gmail.com or ring the church office. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.
Bye. 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 Bye.